Okay, this is Dr. Brenner. I'm going to be recording a little bit right now about SEM, TEM background material. Uh, you should have seen information in the TEM uh, part of the SEM, TEM test. And what I'm going to do now is show you a little bit with regard to the SEM, TEM test file. PowerPoint. Here you're looking at the uh, here uh, slide one. We're going to have the SEM TEM. Ah, you need to actually uh, see this with uh, share screen. Okay, now you're seeing the SEM TEM test uh, PowerPoint. Here you're seeing the uh, SEM along with the old EDAX detector uh, on the left, and uh, it has a liquid nitrogen tank above it for cooling. That liquid nitrogen tank is now gone and replaced with a uh, thermoelectric cooling because the EDAX detector burned out in March. Moving to slide two. Here we're looking at uh, the key to turn the system on, where you see vent and uh, evac in the specimen chamber. Vent would be uh, when you're getting ready to shut things down. Evac would be when you're uh, done loading your sample in and you need to pump things down. In either case, you need at least 10 minutes uh, for venting after, well, you need to wait 10 minutes for the filament to cool down before venting, and you need to evacuate for 10 minutes before turning the filament off. Switching to uh, slide three, there's an X and a Y translate and a tilt. I don't think you will use. Uh, all of that functionality is now built into the computer and it's frankly easier to do with the mouse. The, uh, there's an X and a Y stagnation and a Z translate as well. You will occasionally need to use the X and Y stagnation there if the stagnation is way out of line. You can do uh, the finer adjustments for that using the computer. The Z translate, you now you'll definitely need to lower to the point where you can load your sample in and then raise it back up so you can get the working distance to 10 millimeters when it's time to actually run. The image for the SEM is on its uh, side here, the electron gun is at top, condenser lenses are next, and then objective lenses. We can skip the liquid nitrogen detector because that no longer is valid for this. The EDAX detector comes in at an angle, and it is important that uh, uh, that be properly cooled. Now the new one is thermoelectrically cooled. The EDS stands for Energy Dispersive Spectroscopy. EDAX is for a trade name, but uh, some people call it Energy Dispersive X-ray Spectroscopy. Now, what you're going to need to do for the uh, X and Y uh, movement and focusing and stagnation adjustments uh, one way to do it is with this panel. The ACB button is for auto contrast and brightness. You can also do an auto stagnation and auto focus and then adjust things uh, as needed in addition to that. And you will need to. Uh, realize that when you press one of these buttons up here, 
that that is the function that you're going to control with the dials. Uh, so uh, the dials and the, the push buttons work together. Here you're seeing a variety of different sample holders. The larger aluminum ones are for the medium-sized samples. The smaller aluminum is for the smaller samples. The smaller samples can go into this uh, most commonly used sample holder. There are positions one, two, three, and four on there uh, that you're going to need to know your orientation. Okay, slide 11 looks at the old version of the software. Look at edaxmovies.zip for the new software, but what I want to highlight on here Oh, sorry. What I want to highlight on here are the SEM image and EDS spectrum. Uh, you definitely will be able to see peaks identified, and you may wind up finding, uh, if I zoom out on this a little bit, you can actually see where the peaks are. Uh, sometimes the peaks won't be pro properly identified. You will have to do that manually. Uh, you can do that in the new software by double-clicking on the peak. Here is an example of an EDS map uh, with multiple metals on it. And each color is corresponding to a, uh, a particular element. So in this case, the yellow in the top middle corresponds to aluminum. Uh, then uh, to the top right, we've got gold. Uh, so realize that there are going to be different uh, colors for different ones. Excuse me. Hello, Tom. I am uh, looking Okay, coming back for a phone call uh, that I hope to, I'll edit out. Uh, each element uh, has its own map. On slide 13, you've got the gold sputter coater. Uh, on the right side of that, uh, you've got a uh, little blackberry from the old days that would be used to actually control each of the operations of the gold sputter coater. Now we're moving the TEM. The gas cylinder uh, has a regulator on it. The right side will be the tank pressure, left side delivery pressure. 
and then the part that looks like a hand crank is the uh, uh, diaphragm. 